Pathway family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you. So go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless. I'm just going to talk for just a few minutes. And this is a question that we're going to answer today very quickly. What, what did Jesus, why did Jesus come? That's the question. Why did Jesus come? I want you to just think about Christmas. Christmas is the most celebrated holiday in the world. In America, 91% of Americans celebrate Christmas. On this Christmas season, this is what they're saying. The average, America, average American in 2019 is going to spend an average of $920 per person. It's a lot of money. This year, this year is going to be the first year that we're going to spend on gifts and Christmas over a trillion dollars. It's exponential spending. In 2013, it was $465 billion we're spending, and now we're moving in this year to $1 trillion in spending. Buying gifts, going into debt, some of us. I get stressed out sometimes on Christmas. I don't know about you. When Lisa goes out with that card, I go, please, Lord, help us all. Yesterday, she went all by herself. Oh, Lord, help us. With the five girls. Oh, Lord. All those five manipulators with her. <laughs> Come on, any of you guys manipulating kids? Please. Man. I need those brand new $200 shoes. No, you don't. Feet. You're, you got feet. That's good enough. In Jesus' day, you had little sandals. and The scripture says you don't even need shoes. God will take care of you. But, but in, in, in Christmas, and, but this is what we're finding out also, is we're becoming more commercial and less spiritual. 51% of those 91% that celebrate Christmas will end, attend church on Christmas season. And this is what I'm saying. 49% will not even attend church. Uh, that, last night, I, I told you, we were giving out flyers for everyone to hand out to their friends and relatives. Well, I told you, we don't want them to be left in the car. When I looked into my bag, I had a bag with my, my Bible. I reached in there, and there was 15 cards in there. And I couldn't be a hypocrite. I had to go out there and give them out. But this was the problem. It was 9 o'clock at night. So I got, I got my daughter, and, and we, went, we went to Stater Brothers. Because Lisa said she wanted some water. So we went over to Stater Brothers. And this is what I did with those 15 cards. I just started working every aisle. Are you going anywhere on Christmas? And I ran into some people that welcomed and very thankful. And they might even be here today. And I ran into some tough people. I ran into one of the gang members in the city. He was cussing me out. I don't want your car. Like that. He had his wife with him. He was like, well, I don't want your car. What? Like all this. And I'm, so I handed his wife the car. So when I had the wife a car, he got even more, he got more mad. I told you I didn't want your car. And his wife said, shut up. He gave me the car. Now you, I want the car. That was a 10 o'clock at night in the hood. <laughs> but all of this, to do everything I can to reach just one more soul that needs to be saved. Because there's not a person on this earth that doesn't need Jesus. There are those that don't know they need Jesus. There are those that know they need Jesus. But the truth is, everyone needs Jesus. So why did Jesus come? He came with a mission. And let's look at, let's look at Matthew 1, 20. It says this. And he, as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. An angel appears to Joseph. Now, he's ready to take Mary as his wife, but there's a problem. She ends up being pregnant, and he hasn't been with her. I mean, there's a problem. <laughs> Just imagine you're getting ready to get married, and you know you didn't sleep with your girl. And she says, I'm pregnant. And then she tells you, it's the Holy Spirit. 
Let me meet the Holy Spirit. Knock him out right now. <laughs> so there was a problem with that relationship because they were engaged. They're getting ready to get married. And now Mary is pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So the angel comes in and intervenes because Joseph is ready to let her go quietly. He's still a gentleman. He doesn't blab her stuff all over town. He's ready to put her away quietly. Like, Mary, you dissed me, but I'm still a gentleman. I'll let you go. But the angel intervenes and he says this. And he says, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For This is the purpose. For he will save his people from their sins. So what's the first reason that Jesus came? Jesus came to save sinners. Who did he come to save? Sinners. Who are the sinners? We're the sinners. All that means, let's not trip on the this, on this statement. It just means we've broken God's law. We've all wrong. We've all messed up. And, and all we have to do is just admit it. We've all failed. We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that we never thought we would do. It's just sin. I have good news for every single person in here. Jesus came to save us, save us from ourselves, save us from our mistakes, save us from our cycles of destruction, save us from the misery we're in. Because the more sinful we become, the more selfish we become, the more self-destructive we become, the angrier we become. We need a Savior that will set us free from the depression, from the anger, from the past. Jesus came to save sinners. I'm one of them. Praise the Lord. And it doesn't matter what you've, what you've done in this room. Jesus is not here to judge you. Jesus did not come to condemn you. Jesus came to save you, to make you whole, to make you complete, to restore the broken pieces and put them back together. Paul said it as well in 1 Timothy 1.15. He says, this is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Everyone should accept Paul saying, what I'm ready to tell you, everyone should accept this, what I'm ready to say. They shouldn't, what is this means? You shouldn't reject it. You shouldn't doubt it. You should accept it. You should accept what I'm ready to say. And this is what he says. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul says this, I am the worst of them all. That's cool. You know I, what I love about him saying I'm the worst of them all? He's saying, I'm a really serious, I'm, I'm a bad sinner. I'm like the worst sinner I ever heard of. But I have good news. If he could save me, he can save you. Now, do you know what Paul did? What Paul did was kill Christians. He would go searching for them and stone them to death. And one day, while he was on another run to find Christians and persecute them and kill them in cold blood in front of him, Jesus met him on his, on his road to destruction, on his road to continue destroying Christians and he said to him, Saul, Saul, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Just think about this. How many of you were on your way to do one more run, another cycle of destruction, and somehow, some way, someone invited you to the house of God, and God says, come on, baby. That's not your life. I got something better for you. And God brought you to the house of God so you could be saved and born again. It wasn't that you sought after God. God was seeking after you. 
You know what I love about Jesus? He loves people like me that don't come from a healthy background, that don't come from a perfect family, that come from a whole bunch of dysfunction, dysfunction abuse, abuse, hurt, and pain. That I don't have a legacy of people living for God in my family. But there was a day out of all the mess after my dad died with a bullet between his eyes in a bar fight. After it was all said enough, my dad beating my mom up and punching her face and putting guns to her head for seven years. Out of all that dysfunction and all of that mess, Jesus came to me and he says, you're not, that dysfunction is not going to define your future. I got a future for you. Come on, son. You're a preacher. Come on, son. You're a world changer. With me, you can conquer the world. The truth is, sinners need to be saved. Lord, help us. Saved means they need to be delivered. Someone say delivered. Delivered. Today, there's someone in this room. You need to get delivered. You need to get set free. And I pray that this doesn't turn into another just Christmas, just a Christmas going through the motions moment. That this will be a time of self-reflection. We could think about our lives and say, what do I need to get set free from? What pattern in my life continues that I hate? I'm tired of that pattern in my life. I'm tired of that pattern in my relationships. I'm tired of that pattern in my marriage. I'm tired of that pattern in my kids. I'm tired of that pattern. You need to get delivered. And this is what I want you to know. You can't save you. Jesus is the only one that can save you. We need to be saved. That means delivered. Delivered also from the punishment and judgment on sin. We must be aware of this, that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, this is what he does. He convicts, convicts us of our sin and the soon coming judgment. It's healthy to understand and feel that there will be consequences for the wrong we've done. Maybe we got away with it with the police. Maybe in the hood, they call you Casper, the friendly ghost. Because you do your dirty deeds and you just walk by like you didn't do it. See, there I go, Casper. But there's a problem. You could call yourself Casper in the hood. But in heaven, you're not Casper. In heaven, you're a sinner. And one day you're going to stand before God and you'll have to pay the price for every single sin. But I got good news for you. You could pay the price, but there's another option. This is good news. Jesus already paid the price. He came to save sinners. And for him to save sinners, he had to pay the price for all of our sins. This is true. Every sin that you've ever committed has already been paid for. You no longer need to look at your future with fear of judgment and condemnation. You can look at your future with excitement, expectation, because Jesus already paid the price for every single sin that you've committed, and you can be forgiven. Give God just one more hand. Come on. He's done the job. He came to save us. That word save also means rescue from danger and destruction. Rescue from danger and destruction. This word, this is what it's saying. Is that some of us are in a path of super danger and destruction. That means if you stay on the path that you're on, you're going to get a disease. If you stay on the path that you're on, you're going to hurt yourself in a way you can't recover. If you stay on the path you're on, you're going to destroy everything that's worthwhile to you. If you stay on the path you're on, you could lose your mind. If you're, you're on a destructive path. If you stay on the path you're on, you could lose your soul for eternity. You're on a dangerous path. 
And the sad thing is, there's people on that path with you. Your kids are on that path with you. Your wife is on that path with you. Your cousins are on that path with you. Not only would it destroy your life, it could destroy their lives too. There's a warning here. Jesus wants to save us from danger that's coming. I thank God that he knows the danger is coming and he loves us enough to say, son, daughter, this is your wake-up call. This is your time. You, the future will not be a suicide. The future will not you be you, you being schizophrenic and losing your mind. The future will be you'll have a sound mind. You'll walk in power. You'll accomplish great things. Today is your day to be saved from your own self-destruction. It also means save means to restore to health or to make whole. Man, it's time to get healthy. We're living in a sick society. Our emotions are sick. We're more depressed than ever. Every year, there's a million more Americans that suffer from severe depression. Every year, we have more suicides. Uh, you know what that means? It's so bad, I want to die. It's so bad, I'll kill myself. And I don't think there's a family that's represented here that you don't have a family member to commit a suicide. I know I've had family members that commit suicide. It was so severe, so self-destructive, so much pain, they thought the only way out is to die, kill myself. Jesus will restore our emotions, our lives, our family, our health, our minds. Does anybody need some restoration, salvation in the house? So truth Sinners need to be saved. Truth, we are the sinners that need to be saved. Say, I am the sinner that needs to be saved. Now, when God, I want you, when God speaks that word over your life, it's never in a condemning way. It's kind of like saying this. You got cancer? I want to heal you. It's not a negative connotation. You're sick? I want to restore you. You have dysfunction and you got inherited the dysfunction. I want to help you. You've been trying to medicate your pain and medicate your, you've been trying to medicate with more drugs and more drinking and more relationships. And, and you, you can't even be true to the people you said you're going to be true to. You can't do it because you're not healthy. I have good news for you. We are all in the same boat and we need a savior. And his name is Jesus. Come on, come on. His name is Jesus. He can save us. Come on, he can save us. We're the sinners need to be saved. In Romans 3, 23, it says, all people have sinned. Who sinned? All of us. And are not good enough for God's glory. And this, this speaks to the person that if I were to ask you, if today were your last day on earth, just think about that. I say, Pastor, that's, that's kind of morbid. Come on, kick back. Well, the truth is, 164,000 people die every day. The truth is that this year, 60 million people are going to breathe their last breath. The truth is, every second, two people are dying. You know what that means? There's going to be a final second for every single one of us. It's going to be just like this. <sighs> and you're gone. There's no do-overs. Second chances. No one's going to pray you out of your condition. It's over. You lived your life. The old saying, it is what it is. Jesus came because we're in trouble. And he came on a rescue mission. And the rescue mission would cost him his life. That's how much Jesus loves you. 
He has a plan for your life. And the plan is not destruction. The plan is eternal life. And you could have it today. Today could be your day. But the scripture is saying is all of us fall short of the glory of God. What it means by this, it means this is if you think you're going to get to heaven because you're such a good person, you're deceiving yourself. We all fall short. You know what that means? There's nothing that we can do to be good enough to deserve heaven. Heaven is not earned. Heaven, eternal life, forgiveness is a gift. You know what I love about a gift? All you got to do is just say thank you. You don't have to earn it. Heaven is not a reward. Heaven is not a paycheck. Because a paycheck you earn at the end of the week. If I work 80 hours a week and they say, here's your gift, I say, what gift, homie? <laughs> there ain't no gift. I put 80 hours in. Pay me for every hour, too. Overtime. <laughs> but we're not going to be able to say that with God. He could say, if I give you what you deserve, it's eternal separation from God. If I give you what you deserve, it's judgment, it's wrath. If I give you what you deserve, it's hell forever. But thank God that God has mercy and he has grace. He don't give us what we deserve. He gives us what we don't deserve. And all we could do is say, thank you, Jesus. And that's why we come into the house of God on Christmas and we worship God. Come on. If someone has to force you to come to church, you ain't saved yet. We're going to church again. Why didn't you say that when you're going to club? We're going to club again. We're going to club again. We're going to smoke some more weed. Why? Come on, that's how we used to be. Another round for everybody. Another round. Why another round? Come on, another round. That's how you used to be for the thing that you used to love. And if you're still there, I'm going to tell you, there's a greater love. There's a greater high. There's a greater thing that you're missing. And what you're missing is wholeness, restoration that you can only find in Jesus Christ. He's the one that's the way, the truth, and the life. He is what you're looking for. I told you that gangbang was like trying to gangbang on me and Stater Brothers. His wife put him in check. Shut up. And Stater Brothers, I'm in the line now. And then God said, speak to him. So when I get ready to speak to him, this guy is like 280 pounds, pure muscle. Big guy, six foot four, looks like a UFC heavyweight. <laughs> Tattooed, bald head. I go, speak to him, right? I go, why him? I want to talk to that girl over there. <laughs> So then I go, sir, are you going to church on Christmas? He goes, no, and I don't want your card. I don't believe in that stuff unless someone convinces me otherwise. I grew up a Jehovah Witness, and if I'm going to go back to anything, I'm going to go back to that. Okay? No. <laughs> but he's dealing with somebody, and he's stopping. That, that's, to me, it was like calling me. I'm like, what? I go, excuse me. <laughs> and I told him, sir, have you ever thought of, have you ever heard this saying? He goes, what saying? You're th throwing out the baby with the bath water? He goes, what do you mean? I go, I think you've had a bad experience with church and you're ready to throw it all out. But you said if someone could convince you, you start thinking differently. I'm that guy to convince you. So I'm in the line. I'm in the line with him. His wife is scared right now because she, she knows him like, oh, no, I ain't going to break out here. So I could see her with her car. She's like. <laughs> so he's getting loud. I'm getting loud. We're in the line. We ain't stopping here. And I begin to tell him, I go, you know what the church does? I, I know you're thinking negative about the church, but you know what the church does? You know what our church does? 
I go, we have a men's home. Just give me an example. We do. We have a men's home that we're helping prisoners when they get out of prison or people that want to get off the streets. We help them get their lives back together, get set free off the drugs so they can be fathers and husbands again. How about that? He goes, that sounds good. I go, we got more. I go, we, we have a women's home. We're, we're, we're setting people free. We're getting, setting people free, free from the streets. Girls that are being sex trafficked, we're taking them off the streets. Girls that are struggling, that, that say, I need a new, new start in life. We're taking them off the streets and putting them in our home, and they're becoming moms again. They're getting their kids back again. Isn't that good? He goes, man, that's good. We got more. We got a women's and children's home. We got women that were homeless, that didn't have a place to live, that right now need to restore their lives and get their marriages together, get their family back together. We got a home so they could get their stuff together. And we're, we're helping girls that are off the streets that they no longer have to live in their cars. How about that? He goes, wow, that's amazing. More than that, we have a downtown campus that gives out over a million pounds of food every single year to the homeless, to the hurting, and the broken. I'm doing all this in line on the 15 items or less line right there. His wife's gone. My daughter's already checked out, and we're there. And I go, by the way, what's your name? He goes, my name's Saul. I go, I'm Marco. I go, Saul, today a seed has been planted in your heart. I know this is a divine appointment. You know what that means is God is chasing after you. I believe this conversation is going to continue with God. And he goes, hey, man, thank you. I go, and now I laugh and go, see you later, Saul. <laughs> and then, and you know what he says? See you later, Marco. You know my, and he, he said my name like three times. Marco, I'll see you later, man. I'm looking forward to meeting Saul on the streets again. Orale, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Come on, it's gonna be some Christian gang banging this time. Come on, we're gonna reach them out of the pits of hell one day. I believe Saul's gonna be up here sharing his testimony. I gave Pastor Mark a hard time in Stater Brothers, but you know what? Jesus put a seed in my life and he saved my life. I'm born again. I was looking for this and I was running from it the whole time. I love this. I love this stuff. Because Jesus saves. He can change your life. I know what you're looking for, but where are you going to find it? <laughs> I want to be happy. Where are you going to find that? We got people in this room that are millionaires. And if you ask them, when you finally got your first million, did it like make you like super happy and content to the point you didn't need nothing else? They're going to be quick to tell you, oh my gosh, it wasn't what I thought it was. And then I began to chase after the next million. Still empty. What is it? Is it a car? House? If my old girlfriend just comes back, I'd be whole. Yeah, right. <laughs> if my old boyfriend, if he'll just come back, if you just come back, he abused you when he was with you. Taking advantage of you, going out on you. But please just send him back. That feels so lonely. No, you need to get saved. Come on. God wants you to get to a place that you're so whole that you don't need boo-boo to come back. You don't, need, you don't need Trisha to come back. You say, I am whole just with God alone. I'm good. When the drug dealer comes, I don't need that high anymore because I got a better high, a greater high. I'm whole and complete. I found what I'm looking for, and his name is Jesus. You want some? And this is it. The truth. Jesus is the only name we can call on to be saved, to be made whole, to be delivered from punishment, to be set free from our addictions, to be restored. It's only one name. His name is Jesus. Real quick, I want three people to stand up and say this. Just, one, just a quick statement. What have you been saved from? What did God save you from? Someone stand up in here. Say, Jesus saved me right over here. There we go. What did Jesus save you from, honey? Uh, drug addiction. 
He saved you from a drug addiction. Only Jesus can do that. And you know what's so crazy? It's usually, it's a generational drug addiction. Not just you, it's, it's, it's his family. Only Jesus can set us free from a drug addiction so we don't go back. Okay, somebody else. Okay, go oh, ahead. Here Prostitution, and I was in the women and children's home, so thank you for that. Wow. Prostitution. <laughs> Being sex traffic. Come on. Give God some praise. It's a real testimony. How can Jesus save a prostitute that's strung out on drugs and under a pimp? Only Jesus can do that, and a, and a church that preaches this message of salvation. These, we, these, these aren't planned out. These are just people standing up. Yes. And from a meth addiction and depression, which is wow. a generational curse, like you said. Wow. Yeah. Meth addiction. Come on. Meth addiction and depression. Only Jesus can set somebody free like that. No one, nothing can do that. Let's, let's have two more quick ones. Two more quick ones. There's some more over here. I don't know. Where you, right, where, where, Robbie, where you at? Okay, in the back. Uh, I don't even know where you guys. He I, saved I'm, I'm, me. He saved me from the dark pits of destruction and death, and yeah. brought me here. And I came here with the clothes on my back, and now my cup is running over. Amen. Come on, saving her from poverty, saving her from despair. Come on, saving her from darkness. Come on. Is there anybody in that position? Yes, honey. Suicide. Suicide. You were suicidal when you came here. And then Jesus saved you from suicide, from suicide. You don't even think about that anymore, huh? You're enjoying your life, baby? Come on. Only God can change your heart. Let's get just God one more, one more praise. He's a good God. This is what Christmas is all about, is what Jesus does. This, this Christmas Eve on Tuesday, it'd be great for as many of us to come out, enjoy your time with family. We're an hour here. Let's worship God on Christmas. You can make it. Let's sacrifice and let's give God all the honor and the glory. And let's make sure that we're making this, this, this season a holy season. It's a holy. They say holiday. Holy days. That's, that's what it means. Holy day. It's a day we separate to worship. God, is God good? Let's all stand up. Pastor Robert, can you close out, please? Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel and share, subscribe to theWayWorldOutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.